Hello, my name is Marcos K. I am a disabled artist and director with a focus on art and science. Over the past two decades I have been working exclusively with generative art methods. Generative art is any kind of art created with an autonomous system. It is a practice which has a long history starting from ancient times. In modern times it is usually associated with art generated by computer algorithms or code with early experiments starting from the 1960s. The way computational generative art works is by setting initial parameters and then letting the computer generate an image based on those parameters. Even though there is control over these initial parameters, there is no control over exactly what the computer will generate and thus the art can be thought of as autonomously made. In my own practice I have always set out to give the computer as much control as possible. I take the role of a director, guiding the computer to express my concepts and ideas but also letting it express itself through its algorithms. One way of thinking about this is like the filming of a documentary where there is control over some aspects like the time and location, the positioning of cameras and recording equipment, but the events are allowed to play out on their own with no intervention. AI-generated art is the evolution of this same process and the next step in the long history of generative art. With generative AI tools, again we set some initial parameters that set algorithms in motion which then generate an image based on training data. There is an element of randomness added to this, known as a Monte Carlo algorithm, which is the same method 3D software and scientific simulations use. The output is a recording of this interplay of algorithms that was triggered by our initial input. The impact of this technology will be huge. It will change the way we approach many disciplines, and it is already becoming a new paradigm in the way we approach knowledge and science. I see AI permeating every aspect of digital creation and changing the way we interact with computers in general. This is only the beginning, and everyone experimenting with this new medium is bringing something different into the mix. In a few years, AI tools and all these techniques we are developing right now will become standard practice in the industry. Some people believe that the output of AI is not original but merely derivative. However, these outputs are directed by us and our unique combination of references, viewpoints, and experiences, which bring a unique human element to the equation. The human aspect cannot be separated from AI, it is trained on human data and it is created by humans. It is both a tool and an art form. Art is about intention and expression and thus it is about human communication. It is up to us to use this tool to communicate in imaginative and original ways. AI technology is giving artists the chance to find new creative pathways and to express themselves in ways that weren't possible before because there was not enough time or means. I have been able to visualize projects that I thought would never see the light of day in a matter of days. As someone with a serious disability, this has been nothing short of a miracle as it has given me the ability to create and express myself again which I felt I had lost because of my illness. This technology is making art accessible to millions of people that couldn't express themselves before for whatever reason or limitation, which is very exciting to see. Working closely with AI can be a very reflective and introspective process. There are a lot of things it can reveal about ourselves and the nature of reality. As human organisms and brains, we could be compared to statistical models that have been trained with incoming data over thousands of years just like these AI systems. There is something called the AI effect, whereby every time an AI achieves something it is discounted as not real intelligence. People might be doing this subconsciously to retain their feeling of uniqueness, but as AI gets better at things we consider exclusively human, it becomes a reflection of the ways our biological systems are automated. This is fascinating because through creating simulations of brain processes such as these neural networks we get to learn more about our own brains. This ties in with my work from over the last two decades, which has been an investigation on how simulations have become the main tools of observation of in science. Ultimately, this technology can be thought of as a reflection of the human condition and a mirror for us to understand ourselves better. It is an incredible tool that opens a world of possibilities and new discoveries. Right now we are just scratching the surface, this is only the beginning.